Hi folks, Irene here from Green Road Gardens in South County Wexford and we're very much living up to the, the name of the sunny South East this weekend. It's actually 25 degrees here in the tunnel at the minute so I'm sweating. Anyway, as promised, I'm going to give you a little guided tour of my tunnel and I can honestly say that, um, that I get huge value out of the tunnel. Like I would safely say that I get about six extra weeks either end of the summer. And I can grow things through the winter as well and grow things that you wouldn't necessarily be able to grow outside. Like I have peaches and, and um, grapes in here. So that's the first thing I'm going to show you is the grape. So if we go over here, um, I have it planted here in the corner of the tunnel and I have it under planted with thyme for no particular reason other than that I love thyme and I use a lot of it. And uh, it has two arms up on it and they go down. At the moment, they're stretching down. I have them trained on wires and they go down about halfway down the tunnel. And there's no reason why they won't end up going the whole way down the tunnel. And if you look at it closely here, the beginnings of the little bunch of grapes are starting. And very often there'll be two little bunches. You can see now here's the second little embryo one starting here. So I will only allow one bunch per per side shoot on, on that grape. So then going on down here, down the side, um, this is Departures Lounge number one. And for any other gardeners, you'll understand about the Departures Lounge. It's, it's where you buy all these plants that you really haven't got a home for but you can't resist them when you're in a garden centre and then a whole lot of other things that you propagate because you just can't bear to not propagate. But anyway, I have several departures lounge. I'm better than Terminal 1 in Dublin. I have them all over the place. Uh, then on my left here is the, the potatoes. Do you remember the, the first ones that I was worried? They were only like about three inches high the first time we looked at them and I was worried that they were going to be killed with the frost. So they have grown now, they're about three foot high and I'm going to have to kind of put a little corral around them because you can see the way here they're starting to, to flop out over the side of the bed. So what I'll do is I will put a stake at each corner and just put a string around it just to corral them. A little what I call my undressing potato that I planted that day in the video. That's it. So it's a good 18 inches high. So as a result of the success with that one, I found a whole lot more. And I have outside what I'm going to call my pandemic, pandemic potato patch. Um, and I'm hoping I'll get something out of it. So down along here then I have all my tomatoes planted in and strung up to that wire going along. And uh, down here, I don't know if you remember the day I did the salads with you, I said, I showed you some salad that I had bought in the supermarket. There was three in the one little pack um, and the root ball was left on them. So this, I divided them up. This is one and this is another one here out of it and the third one died. So when I pulled them apart, one of them went rotten at the base and these two have done extremely well. And if you can see in here, like I cut it right back to there. So that's where I cut it back to and all this is new growth. So that will just show you, normally you would throw that into the, into the compost. But um, if there's a bit of a root on it, you can plant it out and you'll get some more if you cut it up high enough. Behind it there are some radishes. And that's what I'm doing here is called intercropping. So like I have a tomato here and I have a tomato here. But in the short term, this space here would be vacant and um, the tomatoes don't need it just yet. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the lettuce and the radishes in there. And by the time that the tomato plants need that space, the radish and the lettuce will be gone. So that's my tomatoes and I have some smaller ones on the other side put in. You might notice here on the ground I have I have sawdust and the reason for that is well one is I have access to a, a plentiful supply of it and two is that it keeps the paths nice and clean and three is it acts 
as somewhat of a deterrent. I won't say a, a deterrent completely, but it is slugs don't like to travel across things that stick to their slime. And uh, yeah, so that's why I have it there. And it just makes the place all nice and neat as well. Here on my right, I have, it's a herb called lemon verbena. And I wish you were here to smell it because it is the purest lemony smell that you could get. Like just, just wafting up there now when I crush that leaf. But it's not totally frost hardy. So I put it in this tub and I lift it outside now onto the patio for the summer. But I can bring it back in then again for the winter. So down here are the basil that I divided up and planted out. So they're coming on. They got a little bit of a, it's like some of the lower leaves here are looking a bit sad. If you look down there, see some of the lower leaves are a bit yellow, but the new need to do with those is, so let's say here on this one, it's it's gone quite leggy here. So to make that bush out a bit, I'm going to actually pinch it right back to there. Now I could either make a cutting out of that or I could just eat it, which is what I'm going to do. And the ones that we did, you remember the ones we did and we put them in the water? I've potted those on and they're doing marvellously well. So I'll certainly be doing a lot more of that. So, I mean, you could constantly be taking little cuttings from your basil and uh, potting them up like that. And you possibly could bypass the process of putting them in the in the glass of water with the willow. I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to try is just rooting them in a gritty compost and see how they do. Um, just down here, just as a little point of interest, I, I was uh, looking at my tomato today and I came across this. That is where a little cherry tomato would have fallen last year and it would have been in the soil all winter and it's now all the seeds have germinated. So there's about 20 or 30 little baby tomatoes there. Now the one thing about them is that you have no idea what variety they are but you'd get some kind of a tomato out of it and I mean if you're absolutely stuck for tomatoes there's nothing to stop you taking the seeds out of a tomato that you buy in the supermarket. So here in this corner then um, I've planted in a courgette, not a courgette, a cucumber. Now a cucumber you plant in the same way as I did the courgette up on a bit of a mound here and the pot in beside it. Um, but the cucumber is different in that it climbs so you've got to give it something to climb up and support it gently. And here just beside it is a chard left from last year. It's a ruby chard and it's it's actually going to flower now. It wouldn't normally be that tall. So in the first year it would stay at about 18 inches high. But then in the second year it's it's starting to put up a, a flower spike there. So that's what that is. Now I'm going to leave it for my seed saving class in the autumn. But I could have moved it earlier in the year into a flower bed. And I mean wouldn't that be beautiful in the back of a flower border? And equally well, here's another thing that I'm leaving for to go to seed. It's parsley, so it's going to seed there as well. You can see the way you get these long stems up on it, so that's going to seed. I've had to puppy proof. Going in and doing all sorts of depredation, like pulling out labels of things and chewing up vegetables and what have you. So yeah, she had to be banished. In this corner, I have a peach tree and for any of you who have been at my open days in the summer you will be familiar with this peach tree and some of you may even have been lucky enough to sample some of the fruit on it. So if you look at here, look at there on that little branch alone there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I can't leave that many because if I leave that many none of them will be good. So I, what I have to do is maybe take them back to about three on that branch. Um, and ideally, actually, if you only had one on each little side, shoot, it would be better. But I have to kind of build myself up to that because I find that very hard to do to pull off um, good, viable fruit. 
and you can you can trim it back any way you like so I just kind of cut it back so that it's kind of hugging the side of the tunnel there you know so it's not coming out in the way of other things and underneath it here somebody Catherine asked me what flowers could you grow in the tunnel this flower here is a self-sown borage and uh, it's I don't you can eat the flowers and apparently you can eat the leaves. Now, I wouldn't want to eat them. They're very hairy and, and rough, but they do taste a bit like cucumber. But you can put the flowers as decoration on cake and in salads and put them in ice cubes to float in your gin and tonic. And the, yes, the possibilities are endless with the borage flowers. So that's one flower. Here's another one here. It's called the poached poached egg plant. And it's the reason I put flowers, apart from looking pretty in the tunnel, is um, to attract bees in. So for things like my peach tree here, I need to have bees to come in and pollinate the flowers. Although that being said, I give them a hand with a little paint push as well. But um, yes, so put them and put them like the doors here. So put them quite close to the door so that the bees will be attracted in to pollinate anything that needs pollination. This plant here underneath is going to seed now, but it is the most wonderful salad for the winter. It's called winter porcelain or clitonia or miner's lettuce. And uh, it's looking very tatty now, but in the winter it has these kind of spade shaped leaves that are very succulent and mild flavoured. So they go very well with other um other salads that you'd have in the winter, like mustard, which are quite peppery. So it gives a nice contrast to that. And just when I'm here now, beside this and kind of under it, I have what I call my frog's plunge pool. Um, because I try to attract frogs in here to help me with the slug population. So I had an old broken dish there and I just filled it up with water. And oftentimes when I'm out here at night, I can hear them sloshing around in there. So basically it gives them somewhere shady and wet to go if they need it. But just make sure, see the way I've put a stone in there? Make sure always to put something in to make it easy for them to get out. Um, what else? And this, this is my fish box. This is my cuttings box where I'm constantly poking things in to root. Uh, I have it filled with grit and, and compost. And uh, yeah, I'm always having little cuttings in there. On the left then here, I just yesterday put in some little baby aubergines and peppers there. So they'll be a while before they come on, but they will. They'll come on at some stage. This is a, a patch that I haven't reached yet. And I'm finding it hard to pull out this thing, but I will. This plant here is called verbascum. And leaf is. So this, this um, plant was used years ago to put in your shoe as an insole when the bottom started. This is back when people were really poor. You put the the leaf in the base of your shoe and it would act like an insole because it's really lovely and soft and velvety and it would grow to about five or six foot tall so it, I'm afraid it'll have to come out of there. All these things here would be things that would have self-sown so that's a, a poppy there in the background. This is um, calendula or marigold. Now the marigold I will leave because I use the marigold for a number of different things. I use them as decoration on cakes and I put them into salads and I make a salve out of the out of the petals. It's a wonderful salve for any kind of minor skin skin ailments. Um yes yeah, so there's a number of weeds and things there as well. Another self sown parsley, another poppy. Um I'm just coming past the tap here now and it'll just remind me to say that you cannot have enough watering points in your tunnel. This tunnel is about, um, the tunnel is about 45 foot long by about 16 foot wide, I suppose. So a number of things like the watering, if you only have one hose and you're dragging the hose behind you as you water, you end up murdering little things because you forget to look behind you and suddenly you look behind and you've 
knocked over a tomato plant or something. So I would say have a minimum of two watering points and I would say maybe have three or four even because when you're putting them in it's not that much more expensive to get a second, a second and third one put in. The other thing I would say about tunnels is because they get so hot like today as I say it's 25 degrees in here now um, to get the doors made as large as you can. I'll just turn the camera around here now so if you look there, like the, the, well, one of the doors is shut at the moment, which shouldn't be. Um, you, you want to kind of use up most of the end space of the tunnel to, to make door space. Because if you don't, um, the heat, it'll just get too hot in here. So just make the doors big. Um, I'm going to turn back around again here. Uh, sorry, no, the other way. So along here then I have my succulent propagation area for, for um, filling up. I make little hypertufa pots and sand and vermiculite and things. There's one of them down here I'll show you. And uh, I fill them up then with little succulents. So I run a class on that. In fact I was due to have one I think this weekend. But anyway it'll happen sometime. So, and they're, they're, um, they're a family of plants that are very easy to manage. And in fact, they thrive on neglect. I'm also trying to get a, a bulk of them together because I'm, I'm building my grandson a little, little house in the garden and I'm going to try and make a sedum roof on it. So that's why I have so many of them there. Here's another departures lounge here. And here now we're at the bed where the... Where the little critter was last night, the the leather jacket. But I think I avoided disaster. It's perky enough, so I don't think it's going to die. But certainly, if I hadn't noticed it yesterday, I would have come out this morning. And the whole thing would have keeled over. So I have spring onions beside that, and then I have a little leek seed bed there that I'll transplant out from. And behind, I have. Um, a couple of broad uh, runner beans rather. Now the runner beans will climb around this stick. Um, so and I'll give it probably another something else to climb on. And runner beans are one of those things that they produce so much that you don't need, you don't need a huge amount of them. I have a few more plants elsewhere and that'll be enough for me. And then here behind, so I had the courgette here at the front. Now that will grow to be at least two foot across if not three foot across. Um, and behind it, I've put in another of the, of the cucumbers. And it's more important with the cucumbers than the courgette to plant them up on the mound. I have lost countless cucumbers in the past from, you know, having them too wet around their neck. So I have the beetroot here and the, and the carrots. So I thinned out the carrots. And what I've discovered, I mean, you think I would know now after gardening for this long, but I've planted these beetroot a bit too close, so they're, they're overshadowing this row of carrots. So I'm going to do something whereby I can hold those up a little bit more so that they won't overshadow that row of carrots. So on the left here then, um, see that big tall plant there? So it must be... Mm, the height of the tunnel anyway so nine foot at least that is a mustard plant which you would normally eat when it's about three or four inches high gone going to seed so it's just flowering now and there's little pods starting to form on it I don't know if you can see that there you see the little pod so that that plant I have two there. I have a golden mustard and a purple mustard and I will leave those there till the autumn, till my class. And that will produce enough seed for half of the parish. So, yeah, it's well worth saving your own seeds. And here is another self sown. These are the opium poppies, which for years, I mean, they're a beautiful pink poppy and they're just an annual. And for years I was afraid to eat the seeds for fear that I would go mad. But anyway, last year I decided to look at try it and I put them on bread and put them in bread and cakes and I'm 
here to tell the tale and I didn't I didn't go mad <laughs> so it, again you can have all your own poppy seed and here then beside that is my sugar snap peas that I planted back at the end of October so you can see there's a huge crop on that and I've been eating these for the past two weeks now and they're still going now they're beginning to stop flowering so like there's the very top now and there doesn't seem to be any more flowers coming on that but there's lots of little tiny ones there and then different stages as you go down along and uh, I wish I could show you now let's just see the these peas um these sugar snap peas they you you eat them when they're nice and fat like that so you eat the whole lot, the, the skin and all. But what you have to do is, and I'm going to do it with my teeth now because I've only got one hand. You, you have to pull out the string on both sides like that. Mm. See the way the string is coming off? And then I just, mm, gorgeous. And this is where I eat most of my vegetables is out here in the tunnel. And they are so sweet and delicious, you, you can't imagine. So definitely worth growing and I have a second crop of those coming on that will be coming on outside soon so around the corner here then are broad beans and these would also have been sown back in October so you can see from the from the flowers and you can hear the bee there pollinating uh, you can see from the amount of flowers how much there's going to be and if you look down here further look they're starting they're starting to produce and they're one one of the vegetables that freeze very well and you can eat them at all different stages and if they get too big then i make a kind of a hummus out of them so that's about it i think um i have my big table here which I saw for the first time in several weeks <laughs> this morning after I cleaned up out here. But uh, so this is a wonderful table for potting up on and for my classes and that. And it basically is a sheet of eight by four heavy grade ply. And I got my brother Tommy to make a very solid table base to go under it. And then on this side of the tunnel here, uh, on this over here I have sawdust on the ground but over on this side where there's no beds it's just my hurdy-gurdy area where I have things lined out and I have all my tools and bits and pieces um, I have my pegs on the ground and it just means that I don't have to worry about weeding here on this side of the tunnel at all it keeps all the weeds down and yeah I have just little baby plants here that would come from the glass house and this is a kind of a, a halfway house for them and then they go outside and then in this last corner that's a pot of French tarragon which is a herb um, that beautiful herb for fish and chicken and things like that it tastes a bit aniseedy and um, I again have that in a pot I can put it out for the summer but it's it's frost tender as well and uh, it's very different than the Russian tarragon. Russian tarragon is um, Russian tarragon is not as nice, and it sets seeds where this one doesn't set seeds. It has to be propagated from root cuttings. So consequently, very often they sell Russian tarragon, which isn't half as nice. So make sure if you're getting tarragon that you get the French one. And so we're back around to the top here again. This is my other. This is my other grapevine here. This is so. This is a black one, and the other one is a is a green one. And I just moved this one up here last year, so I didn't let it fruit last year, but I let a few bunches develop on it this year. So um, I have to say about the. This is going to be a very long video, so I hope it'll upload for me. It possibly won't upload tonight, so maybe we'll have to, maybe you'll have to wait till tomorrow to see it. But um, yeah, from Green Road Gardens, go green, stay clean, and have a lovely Saint. No, no, what is it? May Bank Holiday Weekend. Okay, bye.